First aiders must get permission. Give only the care they were trained to provide and continue giving care until another trained person takes over. You rule as a first aider. Recognize the emergency, protect yourself and others, access help, and act according to your skills and training. Galing ni Mimi oh. Galing ni Mimi talaga. Okay, so after we have to uh, uh, sign and the temperature and sanitizer, we have to go inside here. We are here right now at Kirk United Auditorium and we are about to start with our CPR training under Justin Knoll. We're having um, our CPR training. Hello guys, nandito kami ngayon sa Kirk United uh, Church, uh, what is this, gym. We are having our CPR training under with Justin Noel. So, ang aga namin ano. So, Yes, training, training again. There you go. Come on. Huh? Are you okay? Strong? Ano ba yan? Nag-aaral kayo? Air? Breathing. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. So this is Justin, our trade, um, trainer and consultant. <laughs> Just waiting. We are learning here about shock. So be on the lookout for shock when providing care for an any injury or sudden illness or whenever someone has been involved in a serious incident. Shock is a life-threatening condition. So what's the following signs and symptoms of the shock is anxiety, confusion, cool, clammy skin, or pale color, weakness, excessive thirst, rapid breathing, drowsiness or loss of responsiveness, Nusia or vomiting. People in shock need medical care or attention. You have to call 911. If you haven't already done so, while you are waiting for EMS personnel to arrive, 
care for the suspected cause of the shock and provide continual care. May I tell you what I The whole room. Now we have fire. They divide a room into two. They don't check to see that one's an inlet, one's an outlet port. Therefore, you have one room that's being purged. You have to manage this person's psychogenic shock, but they're not going to be cooperative because right now they feel useless. We need to give them control of themselves by giving them a task. So, what can you do? And then I went unconscious again, so there were episodes of conscious and unconscious. Yeah. We're not just doing the best we have for available, sometimes it is just waking up constantly. CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation is used when a person is unresponsive and not breathing. Compression only CPR. It is used a chest compression without rescue breaths to pump the heart. If you are unwilling and unable to give rescue breaths for any reason, compression only CPR is acceptable. Traditional CPR with rescue breaths is recommended method of care for children and babies. Hands, cross fingers, grab your wrist. I really couldn't care how you place your hands. We have to use our body mass, body mechanics to compress effectively. So I have to get nice and close because my center of gravity is from my hips, from my body. My center of gravity is where my power comes from. I need to put my mass through my arms and just shift my center of gravity over so that I can compress the chest cavity. So, I lean forward. My center of gravity shifts down into my arms, down into the key location, and I get compression. If I try to use my muscles and I'm at a distance, even with my training, I still can't get a proper compression. Is that clicking? That's what I'm looking for. If I go be clean for and press. Mm -hmm. That, by the way, for this mannequin, for the Preston, is 135 pounds of pressure per square inch that I just generated by shifting my body weight. That is about average for what I need to generate for any adult here. It is 95 pounds of pressure to 165 pounds of pressure per square inch. The mannequins you use all the time are 30 pounds of pressure. That's equivalent to a... So what it looks like is... Hey, can I help you? Can I help you? And I go back to it. So I'm now adding in the air just enough to see the chest rise and fall, and then continue. Okay. What's gonna happen with all that excess air? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is the staying alive. That's your physical ability, press and hold 
the plunger all the way down for 30 seconds. So you're going to press and hold. Go ahead, see if you can. You're not doing pressure, you're just pressing and holding the plunger down. That's the idea. And because of that, you actually start to shift me forward. So, how long does it take to circulate the blood through the body that you guys are cracking? And one of my first favorites, do dead people move? It is crazy. I have dealt with this a couple of times. We do have it here in Canada. The last case we actually had was in BC just recently. Person did die. And five cycles. Go. When Chuck Norris did this, the mannequin started to breathe. This is a good card cue. Oh my God. <laughs> Actual CPR in real life is, for 10 minutes of CPR, is equivalent to a two kilometer sprint. Oh my God. Not just a jog, a sprint. No pressure on the CPR. Are you having a leg Only cardiac relief. So, that's the pressure for a seven year old. Not even an adult. <laughs> Choking. If the person is able to cough or speak, his or her airways is not completely blocked. So encourage the person to cough and be prepared to provide care if the person stops coughing. If the person's airway is completely blocked, you must begin first aid immediately. How do you know you're hitting them hard enough? Somebody hits you. Are you gonna lunge towards it or lunge away? So our arm is across on the shoulder to stop them from face planting. We're doing enough force that they're gonna to wanna to lunge forward. That's how we know we're doing enough force because we're causing them pain and discomfort. Find the belly button just above it because if I find the belly button, if it's there, I want to get by the xiphoid process here, but I want to be in, up. Mm -hmm. So I do five abdominal thrusts. And how do you know you're using enough force? We do a second round. Mm -hmm. Usually, this is all we get in before they go unconscious. We have a 98% chance of dislodging the object within those first four rounds. So what happens if I go to do abdominal thrusts and they push my hands away? Sorry? Well, they'll be hurting regardless. Why wouldn't they want me near their stomach? Pregnant, not showing. Just had a surgery. What happens if you try to persist and hurt mom's unborn baby? You're in a restaurant, she has access to a steak knife. Guess who's getting stabbed by a steak knife? <laughs> generate the amount of force we need, it's not as easy. We have to generate a lot of force. So because of that, you can squeeze all you want. It's not gonna do enough force, but that's fine. It's still better than using the one technique. One technique has 70% accuracy, two techniques, 98. That's why we do the second technique, move them around. And if I'm dropping down on your leg, snapping it back, and now you have broken your leg. And they're also pinned on top of you, and you have a broken leg and you can't go anywhere. Eventually you just pass out from the second round. Yeah, we really appreciate actually. We, um, we learned so much from you. Yes. This time is different. This, this time is different. Bye guys. Bye! Bye!